When you think about lost media and the searches that define the community, I'm sure the usual topics like Cracks, Clockman, and Today with Spongebob come to mind. Big searches that took the internet by storm and lasted for months and months and months, sometimes years, and really had a large impact on the people that followed along. But with every year that passes, as more and more topics get researched, found, and remembered by the community, there's another topic in particular that is slowly hitting all of the achievements for a long search, as well as one of the most wanted topics, and once found, will probably go down in history as one of the greatest finds for lost media of all time. Simply because of the amount of time and dedication this search has had for all these years, and how on more than one occasion, everything was thrown upside down, flattening the progress and starting all over. This is possibly the most divisive topic in all of the lost media community right now. You either run from it or run towards it, and that's the search for me and my friends. Now if you are familiar with this topic, then this is probably a video you've been wanting me to make for the past two years. But if you're not familiar with the topic of me and my friends, I jokingly say that I envy you. Because in all of my years of searching for lost media, there has never been a topic so confusing, so disastrous, and so much of a letdown that we should have found this topic two times over by now. No seriously, we've found this piece of lost media on two separate occasions, but in both of those never ended up with it. You might be wondering how that's possible or how we even found two copies of it in the first place. How everything seems to fall apart so often or where the search stands right now. Well this video is going to address all of that and more, the search from beginning to current day, with all the little bits of drama in between. I hope you're ready to experience the madness along with us. Welcome to the disastrous search for me and my friends. For anyone who isn't familiar with the topic, and to set the stage, let me give you a little background about what me and my friends even is. If you watched Nick Jr. growing up in the 2000s, chances are you came across a show called The Backyardigans. It was one of Nick's most popular kids programs at the time, and features five anthropomorphic animals who played in their backyards, but dreamt up wild adventures that they went on together, which is what each episode was about. But back then and even nowadays, the Backyardigans have remained well liked and relevant whether it be from fans rediscovering their childhood, or people who like memes listening to the wide range of songs that came out of the series. But since we're talking about lost media here, this relates to us in a different way. Because for as popular as the Backyardigans have become, it didn't always start out that way, and when we look back at the very beginning of the series, it was much different. Before the Backyardigans officially premiered in 2004, the series started out way differently than we know it as today. That different version dates all the way back to 1998, and not even in the same CGI style, but rather live action. In 1998 at Nickelodeon Studios Florida, the very first iteration of the Backyardigans came into existence, titled Me and My Friends. This acted as the original pilot for the series, and used full body, animatronic costumes, puppets, and physical sets to create the world for the characters. Unfortunately, however, this iteration of the series was very short lived after filming. The executives at Nickelodeon didn't end up liking the pilot that much, resulting in it ultimately being rejected in favor of Dora the Explorer being picked up as a series in its place. And ever since 1998, me and my friends had remained in that rejected state. A pilot that nobody cared about, nobody had ever seen, and nobody really even knew existed. Until as the prophecy predicted, I would eventually bring it into the public eye in the form of a video. The story of our search for me and my friends begins all the way back in spring of 2017, when I had just started focusing my channel on lost media content specifically, and would browse the lost media wiki not knowing what I would find or how much lost content was even out there. At the time, lost media was still becoming more well known online, so most people wouldn't request topics or start searches like nowadays, and you didn't often stumble upon something unless you were specifically looking for it. For me at the time, I was familiarizing myself with Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon topics from the lost media wiki, 
which are still my two favorite categories to this day. And it was in these early searches when I first came across the article for me and my friends. At the time, the article was relatively empty, with one photo and a little description about what it was and where it came from. This photo had come from the website of the people who made the costumes, and there was a short clip in the gallery section that came from a compilation video of different productions that were filmed at Nick Studios Florida. But that was it. I knew what the Backyardigans were, but I had no idea it originally existed in such a different way. But like, I really didn't know this existed. I had never heard about it anywhere else at the time, not even in communities outside of the Lost Media Wiki. It amazed me that such a strange iteration for a popular show could have existed that no one knew about, and was also lost. So since I was gathering material for a video, I thought it would be a great topic to cover on the channel. So I did. And the response was way larger than I expected it to be. I can't remember exactly how many views my videos got back in those days, maybe 50,000 at the absolute best for a week or two of being online. But I distinctly recall the me and my friends video hitting over 100,000 views in only a few days. I remember reading through a lot of the comments at the time, and while most of them were just memes about how bizarre the costume characters look, it was in these memes that the people were becoming connected to the bigger topic. It was something they had never seen before, something that felt strange and different, something that was mysterious simply for the fact that it was lost. And from that point on, traction began within the small, lost media community to actually see if we could find a copy of the full pilot, since there was only that one photo and one clip back then. I can't remember exactly how far into the search we got back then. I know we didn't find anything new, so it was probably just discussion or coming across obvious leads, like the sources of the clip and the photo, but basically the interest was at an all-time high, and I was hopeful we'd end up with a copy soon. I think at the time, the only name I even found connected to the topic at all was Janice Burgess, who was the creator of the Backyardigan series, so this makes sense. I think I only got as far as contacting an outdated Twitter and a Facebook account that might not have even been hers, before I didn't get any responses from either and ran out of ideas. It's hard to believe that there was almost no one connected to the project being publicly named at the time, and only later on did those names reveal themselves as we dug deeper. But back then it was really common to just ask the creators first about if they have their own pilots or any early content like that, so really we were just following the guidelines at the time, whereas nowadays that's not exactly a helpful place to start. With the exception of those big searches like Cracks in a Day with Spongebob, we never really saw months or years long efforts to find a piece of lost media. Most searches would conclude in a matter of weeks, or it would be decided early on that the topic wasn't something we could feasibly search for, kinda like Meso Blues, Van Partible's the only person who would have a copy. Those never had big searches for that reason. But when it comes to me and my friends, this early era of the search would be very short lived when everything came to a pretty large halt and killed every effort to find the topic immediately. Not long after my original Me and My Friends video kickstarted the search, in fact it had to have been within the same week, I ended up getting a notification from YouTube that my video was taken down and a copyright strike added to my channel. I was so confused about what this could have been in relation to, thinking it was some Cartoon Network clip I had used in a different video being claimed, or something like that. But to my surprise, it was the Me and My Friends video. But it wasn't just blocked or anything, it was literally gone, and a hard copyright strike was given to my channel. It's hard to think about nowadays, but back in 2017, YouTube was pretty different than it is now. You could get away with using a wider variety of content that falls under fair use that you can't do nowadays. I can't even re-upload some of my older videos that used other people's music in them because they'll get claimed, whereas back when I first made them, they didn't. So I remember thinking this had to be Viacom's doing. They must have seen how popular the video was getting and tried to stop it from spreading to keep me and my friends under wraps and so no one could ever see it. Considering there was nothing in the video for them to really claim, I assumed this was malicious and immediately filmed a response vlog about the takedown, urging viewers to use the hashtag FindTheFriends to rally everyone together and let our voices be heard. Honestly, I was just more salty than anything else that my popular video had been taken down. But I never uploaded that vlog and I never rallied the viewers. Because the next day, I got an email from someone who claimed to be the party responsible for the takedown. It wasn't from Viacom or anyone from Nickelodeon, but instead, someone who claimed to be a lawyer. If you followed this search back during this era, you probably remember this being dubbed the threat incident. And as explained to me in the email, apparently, 
someone who watched my video found the name of an employee that worked on the pilot and sent them a threat over them not releasing the pilot. Now, this was really bizarre considering I didn't mention any names in my video. Heck, I couldn't even find anyone that worked on the pilot during my research. But I looked closer at which segment they claimed to be the cause of this, and it wasn't even related to me and my friends at all, but rather the CGI pilot. This is a separate topic in itself, but basically, after me and my friends was rejected, but before the final series premiered, a pilot done in CGI was made at Nick Digital and is still lost. I didn't even talk about this pilot in my video, and only included it as a mention for thoroughness. But what the email was suggesting is that because the clip of this pilot was present, and because someone acted on their own, finding that former employee that worked on it, and sent them a threat, somehow I was responsible. Back in 2017, being a lot younger than I am now, I basically did exactly what the email told me to do. Delete the video and never re-upload it again. I basically just wanted the copyright strike removed from my channel, since my channel was still growing at the time, and I didn't want anything hurting that growth. So after it was deleted, I ended up getting the copyright strike taken off the channel. But still, that effectively killed the search as we knew it. The whole incident scared me, the video was gone, and I had to explain to the followers of the search what exactly happened. I remember making a YouTube video about this that was narrated with white text over a black background, and either me or someone else made a thread on the Lost Media Wiki forums that discussed this as well. While it goes without saying that death threats under no circumstances are acceptable, and users should not harass creators over the release of Lost Media, looking back on this controversy nowadays and discussing it with the current iteration of the search, we've found some questionable evidence that suggests the lawyer might not have actually been one. This is for the fact that his email address that was used was only a Gmail, and upon googling it, there was only two or three copyright takedown notices in the entirety of his records, all around the time I uploaded my video, and they can only be found on a non-official, searchable third-party database. Nothing with any legal merit to it. This was also at a time on YouTube where false copyright claims were becoming a big issue, so it's possible that was also an easy option to get the video taken down. Our theory is that this person who claimed to be a lawyer was actually a former crew member of the CGI pilot team, or was friends with people who were, got flooded with emails due to the popularity of the Backyardigans, and created a guise to cut off the connection between the popularity of my video and people reaching out to them. Even though I never mentioned any names in my video, and have no idea how people would have even found them to begin with. While I wouldn't be surprised if someone actually did get sent a death threat over this, and that could have happened. I'm not sure if I can completely convince myself that a lawyer is actually who contacted me, but the whole situation is so old, it doesn't really have any bearing on any of this. And the fact of the matter is, it killed the first iteration of the search for three years. I didn't want to touch the topic because of what happened, and nobody else wanted to touch it either because of the toxic air surrounding it. So for the next three years, me and my friend was dead. It simply existed in the heads of the people who saw my video, but that was it. However, fate wouldn't allow the search to end there, and it again chose me of all people, or possibly cursed me, depending on how much you like this topic, to be the reason it continued. All because I happened to check the Lost Media Wiki Discord one random hour in 2020. At this point, me and my friends was long gone. If there was anyone doing their own research on the pilot at the time, I wasn't aware of it, and was way more focused on Slamfest 99, another big topic in the community, as well as concluding a few more pilot-related topics that were on their way out at the time. But of course, I was still active in the Lost Media Wiki forums and Discord server. Even though the community was much larger in 2020 than it had been in 2017, it still wasn't big enough where messages would get buried, or there would be so much activity it was hard to keep up with. So by chance, in the middle part of 2020, I happened to check the Lost Media Wiki Discord server and saw someone who I had never heard about before in the Lost Media channel asking for information about me and my friends. Now, even after I deleted my original video, I would still get asked about the topic every now and then, but I would usually tell people the search was dead and to not bother looking for it. And now here's some kid asking everyone if they knew anything about the topic. I'm sure at this point, I would have been the only active member of the community to have anything to say about it, so I told the kid I'd message him in a DM and explain what I knew, and why the search had died. What I didn't know at the time, talking to this kid, is that he would single-handedly be the reason why the search ever got revived, and for that I'm thankful. This kid who I underestimated back then, whose messages I could have missed completely in the Discord server, 
or convince him not to make the video because of all the drama, happened to be someone in the community you all know nowadays. That kid was Sewer Reviewer. Welcome to late 2020. I started branching out into making Lost media content, and after the success of my first video covering Lost test animations for the animated 321 Penguins pilot, I decided to take on a more daunting task. I began to look into a project called Me and My Friends, and had decided to watch some videos about it to get started. And upon discovering that L Supersonic Q's original video covering the topic had vanished, I also discovered that the interest in the topic had quadrupled since then. Research on the topic began in August 2020, and at the time, like LSSQ had mentioned previously, there weren't a lot of details about it online at that point. All that was readily available at the time was that this project was live action, only had about 3 seconds worth of footage, and some behind the scenes photographs featuring the puppets used in the pilot. Naturally, my first instinct was to go directly to Nick Animation, although this yielded no results. So I created a tree of contacts to work my way through, all while collecting more contacts from various emails along the way. Throughout my time searching for these contacts, I reached out to puppeteers, people who worked at Nickelodeon for editorial purposes, and even Sesame Workshop to try to get in contact with one of their former employees. The whole endeavor lasted for two months, with the video finally releasing on October 9th, 2020, and the video got a lot more traction than expected. If L Supersonic Q deleting his original video killed the search, then my video is pretty much what revived it, as not only did it publicize the topic to a whole new era of Lost Media fans, but it also recaptured the initial interest all those old searchers had in this topic from three years prior. And this is what became the modern era of me and my friends. And we immediately saw more hands-on search efforts that take place beyond the discussion and comment sections or even the Lost Media Wiki forums at the time. As a result of this new popularity the topic gained, huge areas of discussion were formed. One of those being the Me and My Friends Discord server, which never even had a search server up until that point. The popularity of Sewer Reviewer's video caught me by surprise and I very quickly found myself being roped back into the topic after years of having not even thought about it. I didn't know there was even so much interest still in it, but because I had been the original source of popularity for the topic, the newly formed group wanted me in on the search, even though I was way out of my element back then. The Discord group I had joined seemed to have been going for a while before I made it there, as there had already been huge amounts of discussion about the pilot itself, leads, and what the next steps would be in finding a copy. What's more is I didn't even recognize anyone who was there. The only person I was familiar with was Sewer, and only because we talked about the topic's details before his video came out. But let me tell you, I was really impressed with the level of dedication these searchers had. I spent quite a long time just replying to messages, giving insight, or confirming details from my time originally searching for the topic. It was a great resource to have back in 2020 and early 2021, but eventually, a second spin-off group would form from a few of the searchers within this server, and this is where we originally met a few of the strongest searchers for the pilot, who helped a lot back in those days, one of which was DJ Harvey. I joined the Me and My Friends search back in November of 2020 after Sewer's video got popular and the Discord server formed. It was my first time hearing about the topic since 2019, so I got in touch with Sewer Reviewer asking if I could help him with the search. He agreed to let me help him, mostly by finding new leads for emails and sending them messages. But unfortunately during that time, a lot of the common responses from the former crew members were something like, sorry, I don't have it, or no responses at all. In fact, several of these people who didn't respond back then wouldn't be even recontacted at all for several more years. But even if a former crew member didn't have any content from the pilot, it still helped me debunk a lot of rumors about it, such as people who actually saw it and what crew was actually involved. Most of the crew from the final Backyardigan show had no involvement in the Me and My Friends pilot at all. At this point in the search's history, myself and Sewer, along with DJ Harvey, Chris, and Rift, would split off from the public Discord group as more delicate leads were discovered, and from us wanting to take a different contact approach, from what the majority of the server was involved in at the time. This was a way to spread our resources wider, while also making sure that another death threat situation wouldn't happen again. This group that we formed became known as Lostcast, and if you had been following my channel closely back then, 
there's a good chance you are familiar with this name. This was sort of an outlet we would use to post updates about the Me and My Friends search and to make frequent livestream appearances with any new content we'd find. In fact, it was within the first few episodes of this livestream series where everything exploded beyond the popularity this topic had achieved just a few months before. In January 2021, during the time DJ Harvey was still making the rounds with his contacts, he reached out to one of the production companies that was confirmed to have helped in the creation of the pilot, to which he received a total of nine photos that had never been seen by the public before, and they had just been sitting with this company ever since the pilot's filming in 1998. It's crazy to think that if anyone had reached out to this company previously, we would have had so much new content so much earlier in the search. Originally, since this was uncovered within the Lost Cast group, we wanted to share them publicly and did that legendary stream where the new photos were shown, in what would become the first new content from this search since it began. However, new photos weren't the only content that came out of this part of the search's history. A new chapter unfolded that, to this day, still has those involved quite confused surrounding the mystery of a certain group of users that had collaborated with us for a short period of time. In January 2021, Around the time of our photo reveal livestream, we caught the attention of another user within the Lost Media Wiki called General Wartortle, who I had actually known about from a decade prior on the video game memorabilia museum forums. They claimed to have reached out to some of the admins from the Backyardigans Wiki, a totally separate group of users that specifically documented and sought out content from the show. Nobody in Lost Cast had heard about this group of people before, or any involvement that they had had in the Me and My Friends search, but I thought it would be worthwhile to connect with them and ask them about the topic. Maybe they had some insider knowledge that none of us had discovered up to that point. So, shortly after our photo reveal stream, an introduction was made between Lost Cast and some users from the Backyardigans wiki. Though they weren't just any users, they were some of the administrators who helped run their wiki and had been around in the community for a long time. What we ended up deciding on was creating yet another private Discord group and specifically sought them out to ask if they'd like to help us with the search. While I wasn't the one who originally scouted them out or talked to them about this collab, they did agree and join the group, which is where the story begins. Now, in recollecting this portion of the story, I will say that this is only our experience working with the admins and might not be reflective of their intentions. It was also a long time ago too when things were a little different with the search, but in general, our time spent trying to collaborate with the admins was definitely a frustrating one. Initially, LostCast and the admins were working together pretty well, sharing information and possible leads for who to contact, even though there was nothing too notable that came from these early discussions, but eventually that started to change over time. It was with an incident that happened in 2021, during my 17th birthday stream, when a lot of LostCast users started to become suspicious of the admins' devotion to helping the search. At this time, a user only known as GenPen approached me claiming to have information about me and my friends and proceeded to send an exclusive picture of the pilot over Discord, which he would later delete as he hadn't acquired permission to share this photograph yet. The photo featured a behind-the-scenes look at two puppeteers holding a puppet of a yellow meerkat and a purple frog. Unfortunately, the image was deleted almost immediately after being sent, and apparently the same thing happened to another member of our search team, Mr. Bones, who also saw the image. GenPen claimed that he wanted to get permission from the owner of the photo before sharing from the owner, in the same long wait when GenPen themselves disappeared as well as nobody being able to reach them again, leaving the pink frog photo a notable piece of secondary lost media from the search. By this time, after the Pink Frog incident, and after having stayed in our collab group for several months, a certain vibe between the two parties started to show, at least to me anyway. At the time, they had disclosed names of employees who we hadn't even heard about before, rare names that they had apparently contacted years prior to no avail. These people either didn't have any content or hardly remembered the project at all. But nowadays, with the most modern iteration of the search that we've conducted, We've reached out to those same people ourselves and discovered that they did have content, they did have information, and one of those people the Backyardigans wiki admins claimed to have contacted never even existed in the first place. Out of all the leads they claimed to have reached, there was only one of incredible note that could have possibly ended the search. That was a producer of Me and My Friends who supposedly had a copy of the pilot on tape, but according to the admins, the producer stopped responding and the status of that tape was unknown. 
There was really nothing for us to do at that point with this information, and my reaction to all of this info came down to the fact that the wiki admins simply didn't care enough about the search to really help us anymore, or they simply didn't trust us with this information. Through more conversation it was even revealed that these admins hadn't been searching for me and my friends as far back as sewer reviewers video, or even as far back as my video, but rather in 2015, two years before I covered it, and apparently it was by accident. Backyardigan's wiki admin, Melodilus, stated to us that another user named Sandra had looked into the project before, and stated, Sandra was doing research on a 2008 live show of the Backyardigans, which Yvette Helen designed. Sandra went to Yvette's website looking for info on the 2008 show, and she discovered the MNMF pictures. At the time, the pictures were just labeled me and my friend's pilot, with no mention of Backyardigans. We were all confused about what it was, and we weren't sure if it was made before or after the main Backyardigan show. At one point, I guessed it was some kind of adaptation or even potentially a knockoff. We googled it, and there were barely any results. Fortunately, we found Rick Leon's site, which dated it to 1998. From that point, we knew it was the first ever pilot, and we were able to piece together an article about MNMF for the wiki. A few years later, our article's info was copied over to the Lost Media Wiki, and the rest is history. I can't speak for the admins or what they might have thought about us back then, but maybe to them, we were stealing their thunder. Maybe to them, us Lost Media Wiki people were outsiders, and they didn't feel comfortable sharing their own leads or being entirely honest. But at that point, how could I trust anything they said, just because of how they wouldn't respond to us or were never around? Unfortunately, this was the beginning of the end for that initial interest that Sewer Reviewer's video created. I didn't really see the use in being part of the Colab Discord group anymore, so I left that. The actual Me and My Friends Discord server had become flooded with new users joining at that point, around March 2021, claiming they had copies or not having been caught up with the current progress. So the same questions would be asked over and over again. I ended up leaving that too. The only group I stayed with was Lostcast, who would still occasionally search for new leads, but it wasn't the main focus of the group anymore. And just like that, the topic faded away throughout the rest of 2021. But just like all pieces of lost media that have huge cycles of being popular and then losing that interest, me and my friends would have its day in the sun again in late 2021, from another user that revived the search into the current incarnation that it exists as today. Enter the Burr Arc, an individual who began searching for the pilot himself around this time, but in a rather low-key way. Like I mentioned before, the topic had simply slumped into another one of its unpopular periods, where people were tired of the dead ends and general annoyance of the fake leads. Too many people wanted in on the topic, which drove the progress away. So because of this, Burr's quieter approach ended up helping in the long run, with him being able to make some new leads that were not contacted before. Even after all these years, there are still new names out there that he found and hadn't been contacted before. And while the majority of Burr's early contacts that he talked to over the next couple months did not have any information or new content from the pilot, one former crew member did. In February 2022, the original designer of the characters sent over 9 new photos from the set of the pilot and once again proved that even when you think all has been uncovered, there's usually more that's hidden in plain sight. This batch of photos was particularly interesting for the fact that we got a really interesting look at the behind the scenes process in making the pilot, content that would never be seen in the video version of the pilot in the first place. We saw the actors getting dressed, the masks separated from the bodies, and some crew on the set itself. This find was so surprising to us and seemed to come out of nowhere that the Lost Cast team regrouped and did another live stream showing off the pictures and wanted to get in touch with Burr himself to share more leads and discuss the topic again. <laughs> Just like that, a new chapter of the search began, and slowly, our old contact lists started getting dusted off and old groups reformed, as well as some new groups. At its peak, there were probably about three or four different iterations of Backyardigan's search teams, with different members in each of them, all doing different stuff. This wasn't really on purpose and more of an accident, simply because so many different members had come from so many different backgrounds. You might think this huge split in the groups caused communication problems, and sometimes it did, 
but it also led to everyone being able to search for their own leads and created one of the biggest finds in the entire search, a turning point of sorts that came from a couple users who had been taking a more casual approach to the search than any of us had been up to that point. Earlier, I mentioned a search member named Mr. Bones, who had been involved in a little bit of searching from the previous years. He was one of the people who ended up seeing the pink frog image before it was deleted, and got Sewer Reviewer connected with the Backyardigans wiki crew in the first place. And it would be in March 2022 when Mr. Bones' biggest achievement would take shape. My knowledge of me and my friends was just extensive as sewers or LSSQs at that time, but I never fully joined any smaller search groups back then and only heard about leads secondhand. However, there was something bugging me about this whole case. When LSSQ mentioned that the Backyard Again Wiki admins had contacted a producer who supposedly had a copy of the pilot on tape, no conclusion was ever made about it. And considering the doubt on the wiki admins at that point in time, we had never even attempted to reach out to this producer ourselves. So, it was decided to make contact. I reached out to General Wartortle, who had previously talked to the Backyard Again Wiki admins and where the lead came from, and L Supersonic Q to form a group specifically for discussion about this lead. Sewer Reviewer had also mentioned the possibility of the producer having a tape in his update videos, but after checking with Wartortle about anything new that might have happened since then, he stated the following. I messaged the producer on Instagram last May, and they never responded. They've been active since then. No clue if they're ignoring or didn't see it, but there's a small chance they didn't look. I think it might be worth trying to contact them on another platform. Their name is Redacted. If you want to reach out to them, be my guest. I say go for it. Now, at this point in time, I figured that if anyone would have a copy of this thing, and potentially release it online, it would be this individual. We had gotten their name from the Backyard Again Wiki admins, so I was able to reach this person on LinkedIn. Now, um, I don't know if this was because of my connections with our showrunners, or just because of sheer luck, I don't know, but when I connected with them, they added me back, to which I sent them my first message. Now, I didn't want to come off as too blunt, but uh, I came off as blunt. Hello, I've been researching the Nickelodeon show from 1998, and was wondering if you might have any additional details about it, as information regarding it is quite scarce. Thanks. To which they asked which show I wanted information from and why I was researching it. We couldn't believe we even gotten a response from them at all. It seemed like after all these years, we could potentially get this thing found once and for all. All we had to do was confirm to see if they had a copy of it and if they could release it online. We all know where the story is going though, don't we? Now at this point, I told them I was simply doing personal research on a Nickelodeon project from that time, and I read about me and my friends. I couldn't get any information about it online, and I grew curious. And I knew that they were the director slash producer of the project. I wanted to ask them a few questions, and see if they'd be willing to share any. Surprisingly, they agreed to this, and I was getting pretty excited. Now, me and LSSQ didn't want to pop the golden question just yet, as that might have been too soon, way too fast. I didn't want to ask about a copy at this point in time yet. So, instead, I asked them about the plot, in hopes of getting more details about the overall project. Surely they can share that with me, right? Well, sort of, kind of. But from how they described it, it sounded kind of cryptic. No plot really, a premise. For the pilot, it was the concept that if you are waiting and doing nothing, it feels like things take forever. But if you get involved with other things, the time passes and you enjoy your time, geared towards small children. Yeah, I have no idea what this means either. Kids, comment down below what you think. Winner gets a copy of the pilot. After some back and forth, it was time to finally ask the golden question, and whether or not to see if they had a copy. I didn't ask if they could share it. However, their response wasn't great, and years of hype was ruined in a matter of moments. They replied with, drumroll please. There is just the pilot, but nothing I can share. Hopefully you'll stumble upon it somewhere someday. It was a very sweet and charming little show. Thanks for your interest. Take care. The takeaway from this conversation is that she basically stated that she had a copy of the pilot, and the rumors are true, but couldn't release it under unknown circumstances. Just lovely. Similar to what had happened many times before, we once again found ourselves defeated at the idea that we basically found someone with a copy but couldn't get our hands on it. To this day, I'm still a little surprised at how quickly she ended the conversation. Like she knew we wanted it released and this was our only intention for reaching out. It didn't even give us a chance to ask if there was anyone else she might know who has one, or where exactly she believed we could stumble upon it someday. If you ask me, I think the days for stumbling upon it are long over, and it's going to require finding another person who has a copy and would be willing to share it. At the time, this felt like an impossible task, as we never thought we'd get in touch with a first person who had a copy, but to everyone's surprise, we would get a second chance, and it came only a few months after our exchange with the producer. 
From March 2022 until September of the same year, the topic had remained on the back burner following the producer rejecting our inquiry. At this point, me and my friends was basically set on a cycle of being incredibly popular when a new lead would show itself and then fade into the background when that lead inevitably dried up. There wasn't a whole lot going on during this slow period, and the older users left most of the searching to the newer ones, who were more interested in the topic than we were. Burr, Alex, and a few others from the Discord server were still digging pretty deep for new contacts, but it mostly didn't lead anywhere. It wouldn't be until Burr started going back and contacting older leads again, when the biggest find of the entire search would be discovered. In September 2022, Burr was going through a list of names who were credited as having worked on the show, and came upon one that referred to a sculptor that was hired to construct the animatronic heads. As far as we knew, nobody had reached out to anyone involved with the costumes besides the original company who made the exteriors. Unfortunately, through a quick email exchange, this sculptor confirmed they didn't have any content, but provided the name of someone else who might. This name was one that Burr hadn't come across before, that we hadn't come across before, and that no one had come across before because every credit of this person's name that's connected to the series online has their first name listed incorrectly. It's like crediting him as John when his real name was Bill the whole time. This revelation felt like we had uncovered some kind of hidden lead that nobody even knew about, and is another reason why we believe the Backyardigans wiki admins were hiding content from us, or intentionally steering us in the wrong direction. They had claimed they had contacted this individual by his incorrect name which they couldn't have done because he doesn't exist by that name, and never clarified that error if in fact they knew. They also claimed he had no content, which is the complete opposite of our experience with talking to him, and Burr did that by sending an email with this new name and email address. Burr mentioned that he was doing research on the pilot and was looking for information about it and sent it off. At the time, I don't think any of us had been paying enough attention or had enough faith in this lead coming through for us so we didn't really talk about it for the next couple months. And then in December 2022, at the very end of the year, the unexpected happened. This became one of those do you remember where you were moments when the news broke, because I distinctly recall where I was. It was around the holidays and I was at the mall, right near the entrance of Five Below, when I checked Discord on my phone and saw with my eyes images of a tape with the words Nickelodeon Sampler Number 3, dated 1998. This single photograph was a copy of me and my friends, and proved the existence of another tape being in the wild. Right in the middle of the mall, I had a really big smile on my face, and felt the urge to exclaim to everyone we found me and my friends, the search is over, as if anyone would have known what I was even talking about. Burr and this former employee had been talking back and forth for a bit, confirming that the employee had performed the animatronics for the costumes during the pilot's filming, and also had a lot of photos from their time working on it. Not only that, but there was even a bonus tape in this content that nobody expected to exist. A label that called it Me and My Friends Rehearsal Tape. Based on that wording, it must have come from some kind of first performance before the actual filming of the pilot that ended up being shown to the executives. I didn't think they would have recorded something like that, or even if I did know, I never would have guessed that a tape of it would still exist. We've certainly never come across even a mention of it from anyone else so this could be the only copy that's still around. However, there was one big issue with the retrieval of these tapes. The former employee actually had no way to transfer them, having stated he doesn't have a VHS player that works anymore. Though he also claimed the tapes had been previously viewed with his kids, so their contents could be verified. He told Burr that he would look into transferring them and would keep us updated when that happened, which to this day, we're not sure if it ever even happened. This former employee took a long time keeping us updated with getting them transferred, until he eventually returned with a response that had nothing to do with the transfer or any content at all, and instead responded with probably one of the worst emails we could have gotten back regarding the tapes. He stated that, I checked in with a producer friend of mine over at Nickelodeon. She's going to see if it's okay for me to share these tapes in the photos. I'll get back to you as soon as I hear back from her. I hope it works out. Fingers crossed. And as you could have guessed from the fact that me and my friends is still lost, he never got back to us at all with this, and it was the final email we ever received from him. 
This is one of the most infamous interactions within the modern iteration of the search. Nobody is quite sure what happened here, since he never got back to us confirming his friend rejected the request, but if I had to guess, that's probably what happened. He probably asked his friend, the friend checked and said no, and not wanting to break the bad news to us, the employee just ended the conversation, leaving us in the dark. Months later, myself and Sue Reviewer reached out on separate occasions, asking about any content he might have, but we never heard back from that either. And no, there was never a point where we mentioned we were part of a search group or looking for lost media. It was as normal as it could have been. In fact, our theory is that the friend he checked in with was actually the producer from months ago who Mr. Bones reached and wouldn't give us their copy in the first place. There's no proof for that claim, but it would make sense. Though we're not sure why he even thought to check in with anyone in the first place. We've gotten so many pictures from other parties, and this guy isn't working at Nickelodeon anymore, so there's no reason for him to have been suspicious that anyone would have gone after him over the release of these materials. Actually, we never even said we had the intention of posting them or sharing them anywhere. It was literally just him wanting to get permission to send them to us in a private email. Following the second attempt to get a tape is what led to the creation of the current and final iteration of the search group, a private chat that formed shortly after all this happened. And following the end of this tape lead, a user from the original Me and My Friends Discord server was added to our private group and claimed to have reached the storyboard artist of the pilot, who claimed to have some photos, but we never got those, and the user who shared those emails didn't say anything after the end of 2022. I think maybe they had connections to the Backyardigans wiki admins, so in a conspiracy theory that everyone can believe at this point for how insane the search has become, we assumed they were a spy working with the Backyardigans wiki admins to leak our info, so we removed them from the chat and now operate in smaller numbers within our group. Throughout the rest of 2023, it was a very slow search with those small numbers, and we also took a little more time going through each lead that we found. We sent a lot of emails, talked to a few people directly, but never achieved the same level of closeness to getting a copy throughout the rest of that year. The only notable find was some kind of weird animation clip from the company Celluloid Studios, showing Pablo walking through a small background. We don't know what this is from or what it was made for, but one of our current theories is that it was some kind of bumper used within me and my friends to transition between scenes, but that's not confirmed. And that leads us to this year, 2024, and where the search stands right now. While I've seen a lot of discussion about this topic in the Lost Media Wiki forums, and the popularity is still at an all-time high, according to the responses I get in replies on X, our group is the only active search online for the pilot, and we've been blazing through names on our contact list. Burr is so good at finding names, he's kind of inspired all of us to look, and we've come up with a collective list that we've slowly been messaging over time. Some people never gave us responses, some didn't have any content from the pilot, and some didn't even remember working on it, which is very common to hear. However, there have been a couple people that knew what the pilot was, confirmed they worked on it, and have content buried in storage from their old days working at Nickelodeon. The good news is the two people who confirmed they do have content said they wouldn't mind checking and seeing what's there. And of all these people we've contacted recently, probably close to 9 or 10 at this point, one of them claimed they might have a tape with me and my friends content on it and other productions from Nickelodeon Studios Florida in storage. They said it would take some time to retrieve, but considering how long we've been waiting for the pilot at this point, I'm fine with taking it as slow as we need as long as we end up seeing it eventually. Additionally, we also contacted someone that said he had a script of the pilot, which is the first time we had ever heard about that. But after asking if it could be shared, we didn't get anything in response. This was also someone the Backyard Against Wiki admins claimed they contacted years ago and had nothing, so it really makes you want to go back and check those old leads again and again to make sure nothing has been missed. This search has just been so crazy and has been going on for so many years, it's pretty amazing that it's been able to come back again and again, and still remain as one of the most wanted pieces of lost media within the community, whether you enjoy the topic or not. The pilot's been missing for 26 years. The official search has been going on for 7 years, and it's only been 1 year since we've found 2 tapes, with the possibility of a third one being unearthed 
it could only be a matter of months before the pilot is finally found, and the disastrous search for me and my friends can finally be remembered as a victorious one. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to special releases all month long to celebrate my 15th channel anniversary. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.